Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. I'm going to start today's video, understanding that the task given in the previous video has been accomplished. In fact, the two tasks, the ten desires, and the reading of the first letter of Christ. I must admit that many did neither. But that won't stop me from commenting here, what needs to be commented on. Anyone who wants to can read it later, or as I said yesterday, it's up to each person. So, continuing what I said yesterday, all the gods that arrived here were distorted by the Dark Ones. They had their teachings and their ideas, completely modified, because it would never be allowed to imagine a loving God who did not punish, because the great villain of this entire process has always been fear. So you had to be kept under fear, under gods that punished. Even in the golden times, you already had the power to see o create, the power to receive back everything you emanated. So with so many rules, with so many limitations, with so many impositions, it wouldn't be difficult to imagine that you only generate bad things around you. And that was more than enough way for those who controlled to spread fear even further. You see, because you didn't do what we said, God punished you. Look, you lost everything, you lost your crops, you lost your cattle, you lost your food, because God punished you and made you lose everything. Many, today, still believe this, that they go through certain circumstances due to divine punishment, for something they supposedly did, and of course you always find the reason for the punishment, because you continue to be incarnated in Tersera, and reasons there will be no lack, so that supposedly you will be punished. Because you emanate wrong feelings all day long. So this has always been like this. Each accident, the more serious that Gaia caused, was the wrath of the gods, it was the wrath of the divine, so that you remained more and more afraid, more and more submissive to the rules, of those who dictated the orders. And in the meantime, religions began to appear. A religious leader emerged within each culture, who was supposedly the representative of the one who united them, who punished them. And yes, be sure that that representative always believed that, that he was the supreme representative of what the gods said. And everyone in the communities, everyone in the villages, in the cities, bowed to him before doing anything, because he said what the desires of God would be, of that vengeful God, of that punitive God. Then he determined how many sacrifices should be made, in the name of the peace of the community, how many animals should be slaughtered, how many virgin girls should be slaughtered, in the name of appeasing the wrath of the gods. My brothers, I can even tell you that in many places on your planet right now, this still exists. Of course, in a very veiled way, in a very hidden way, because their laws no longer allow this, laws have overridden religions, and no longer allow this type of killing of humans as sacrifice. Barbarities still exist in this world, at this moment, today, now, all in favor of teachings that have been passed down over time, to precisely keep you out of the line of love and evolution, and keep you trapped in a series of cause and effect, because everything you cause, the effect returns. This is the law. There is no difference, but it is not the law of return as punishment, it is the law of return in which you receive exactly what you emanated. So if you emanated love, if you were kind, if you were charitable, the universe returns more of the same, now if you humiliated, if you hurt, if you harmed, in the same way the universe will give you back more of the same, and you will always feel wronged. Because you think you didn't deserve that, that humiliating the other, and doing harm to the other, was because the other deserved it. So you did it, so you don't deserve to be punished. This is what was passed on to you. You became judges, condemning executioners of the other. I don't know at what point in your existence someone gave you a judge's clothes and gown, so that you could go out and judge your fellow human beings, not just judge, condemn, and inflict punishment on them. Interesting. This way of feeling powerful is very interesting, because this is nothing more than feeling powerful, thinking that you can have someone else's life in your hands, feeling like God. You have always liked to play God, to manipulate to modify what nature gave you. What nature brought you was never enough for you, you always had to increase, modify, to make more money, 
to get rich, not for the good. Who cares, who cares what happens at the end? Everything is the spring of the world, the energy of money. So you were totally induced to act this way. All religions were created based on a punitive God, based on a vengeful God. And into this world comes Sananda. I'm not going to comment on his story here. What I want in these videos is to comment on the importance and everything that Sananda represents for this planet and for the universe. So for those who read the first letter, you will notice that he was essentially human, in his first years of life, not that enlightened and perfect being, which you were led to believe, because he had not yet awakened, exactly how many of you lived until recently. Until one day the moment came for him to awaken, and then he knew everything that our father or mother God wanted him to know, wanted him to understand, the power that you all have in your hands. Not the power that only he would have, no, it is the power that you all have. Of course, it is necessary to talk a little about Sananda's soul. He is an extremely evolved soul. And for those who believe, that it is a fractal of me, no, it is not. He is an extremely evolved soul, with a lot of power of love and persuasion, with a lot of caring power, with that power to balance, to center, to show that not everything is what it seems. So this extremely evolved soul, of extremely high dimensions, has its role in the universe, not just on planet Earth. But what was happening here on this planet, was total alienation of everyone who lived here, from the Divine, because you were not in touch with the loving Divine, with our loving Father or Mother God, and ready to show you your powers, no, you linked yourself to other gods, not this one. You simply thought that this God was sitting on a cloud, with a hammer and a table, judging each one of you, defining where you were going, whether you were going to hell or heaven. A concept that is deeply rooted in your minds to this day, and that many believe actually happens, exists. So something needed to be done for the people of this planet, the time for change had come, the time had come for the people to awaken. Then Sananda's soul, with a lot of love, with a lot of determination, began to prepare itself, to take on this human outfit. As I already explained to you, it is not easy for a soul of such evolution to incarnate in this body here in Tercera. But he prepared himself over time. Everything was being organized so that his birth could happen. It was a huge milestone in its era. For the countries that worship him, here the beginning of a new time, here the zero mark at his birth, in which you place the time, as before and after Christ, such was the importance he had on this planet. Of course, not all religions accepted him as a son of our father or mother God, many continued his journey, but a large part of your planet accepted his words, accepted what he went through, the teachings he used. And this has reverberated to this day, we are here talking about him, 20-20 years later. So what I want to comment here is exactly what he comments in the letter, that a lot of what he said, people didn't understand, because they were so used to that experience of punitive and vengeful gods, which was very complicated for them to understand, that God is love, pure love, nothing more than that. That everything that happens is the result of your own thoughts, the result of what you emanate. In his holy wisdom, Sananda thought, that after learning everything he learned, he would come to his people, and everyone would listen to him, everyone would accept him, and accept his ideas, and the people would evolve, and the people would be liberated. But we cannot forget that everything here was controlled. So the great rulers of the time could not let this happen, because if the people were freed, what would it be like from then on? How could they keep the people in check? How could they collect taxes and fill their coffers with money if the people rebelled against paying them? Because there would be no more punishment, there would no longer be that punitive God who would punish them, if they didn't pay their taxes. What would it be like? And Sananda began to realize that change would not be easy, and he knew that many millennia would still come, until his word was understood, was truly absorbed. So notice everything he said, there were no recorders at the time, nor were there people who wrote down, word for word, what he said. Yes, his disciples told a lot. But you are fully aware that when you tell a story, you increase one point. 
This is the most perfect sentence I have ever heard from you, and I have learned, because it is so perfect. So imagine what was later passed on by his disciples. So my brothers, Sananda did not write the religious books, he did not publish any books, he did not record his messages, at that time. So everything was very well manipulated, so that something or other that he said would be perpetuated, but no, nothing that would bring you the great power that you have, and could bring the rebellion of an entire people, knowing that he would not be punished by his greater God. So notice my brothers, that today I ask you to read the letters. So it's as if you were twenty twenty years ago, listening to what Christ was saying, what Sananda said, but today there is a difference, because the vast majority who are here, I want to believe, accepted the words they read in the letter, some were perplexed, yes, because the story is totally different from what was told, by their religious books, and by their religions. But it's up to you to understand how much everything written there resonates with what you have learned. If you notice, I have already said a lot of what is written there, because this is the truth, it is not the truth of Sananda, it is the truth of our father or mother God, what Sananda tells in the letters, it is nothing more than the description of the that our father or mother God does, and that has to be said by me, by him, and by all beings of light who start talking about our father or mother God. Because the truth is unique, there are not two gods, there is a single loving and merciful father or mother God. There is no other. So when we talk about him, and what he did for us, yes, it has to be for us, because I am his creation too, I am not him, I am a small particle of him, I am an offshoot of him. So I need to be in the middle of us. What he did is pure love, even if many do not understand to this day, why he allowed all this, why he allowed all this manipulation on his planet. This has been explained many times here. You are having the chance now to evolve, you are having the chance now, to understand the truth, you are having the chance now to be ready for everything that is yet to come. The truths are horrible, and you will understand how much you have been manipulated by religions. This is the saddest thing, because religions, nothing more, nothing less, were created, for precisely that, through beliefs and misplaced pieces of speech, from the great beings of light who have already been here, to show exactly, that you they have no power, that power is in the hands of God, and that he does what he wants. In a way this is not a lie. God does what he wants, but always thinking about evolution, never about evil, never about punishment. You punish yourself, not him. You provoke the problem, and receive the return, nothing more than that. So my brothers, twenty-twenty years ago Sananda wanted you to awaken, and his words were not understood. Some even forced themselves to understand, but for them it was too complicated. But the important thing is that that spark of love, from this being of light, was planted in everyone's hearts, all who follow his words, because there are other religions, which do not consider Sananda, consider other beings of light. But most of your planet is Christian. So that's why what was said is so important, and the importance that Sananda has in this evolutionary process, which is happening now, and you will understand this much later. So my brothers, Sananda was human, because he was incarnated here, in this dimension, his soul was extremely evolved, but he came with the objective of freeing his people, of freeing you from the yoke of those who kept you imprisoned. But as we can see, here you are 2020 years later, starting the journey towards evolution, again, but this time, the limit has reached. So this time, there will be no more chance for you to remain trapped unless you choose. Whoever chooses to remain in this prison, very well, can go packing their bags, to catch that tram, that's all I have to say to you, and continue in this prison, imagining a punitive God, who punishes you, who punishes you, who judges you all the time. So this is what you will have, if you continue along this path, believing faithfully and piously, in what your religious books say, in what your so-called representatives of God say. It's your choice, who you want to believe in. The elevation that Sananda had, the moment he went to the desert, is what you are having now, only you are still very slow, 
in the knowledge of everything you have to understand. But exactly because he was an evolved soul, extremely evolved, he was able to go through that entire knowledge process in one go. You are moving towards this, towards knowing the truth, the truth of your souls, the truth of the power that you have, that you all have. You just need to believe in them, and you know, that when you believe, you succeed. So the choice is yours, who will you believe, those who say you have no power, or those who say, you are powerful, you are capable of doing whatever you want, always being aware that everything you you do it, there's an opposite reaction. Just that. This is the great teaching. So it's your decision, what you want for your life at this moment. I told you that this year would be different, that I would be preparing you for evolution, effectively speaking. And then I ask a question, are you ready? Are you ready for the truths? Are you ready to discover your powers? Are you ready to accept that you have been deceived all this time? But accept it without revolt, accept that everything was a growth, that everything was not an evolutionary passage, to bring you here, to this moment. So stop and think about what you want now, today, at this very moment. Do you want to evolve, but open yourself up to everything that will really come, or are you afraid of what you will know? Make your choices, make your decisions. And don't forget, for tomorrow a new task, read the second letter of Christ. I'm sure that at the end of reading these letters, you will no longer be the same, firstly because of the truths you will understand, second, for the energy you are receiving when reading each letter, and thirdly for the preparation that is being done in each of you, which is resonating with these letters. I am Archangel Michael. I am here always ready, and increasingly committed to evolving each one of you.